Hey there, welcome. This is The James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. The other big headline of the day, besides dancing on uh, Hunter Biden's verdict, is four Russian warships have docked in Havana. Well, they're not all warships. One of them's a tugboat. One of them's uh, like a refueling ship. But one of them is a frigate and one of them's a battle sub. Now, the sub and the frigate are capable of carrying nuclear weapons. But for the reporting that I have from CNN, it says uh, U.S. officials have concluded that there's no nuclear weapons. Oh, okay. Wow. If they if the U.S. official said it, you know, they wouldn't want they would never lie to us about such things. But I'm surprised this isn't a bigger story. I, well, I take that back. I'm not surprised this is a bigger story. If if there was any journalistic integrity left at any of the major networks, CNN, MSNBC, I mean, really, Fox, you should be hammering this, too. Because think back to the Cuban Missile Crisis. What the Cuban Missile Crisis, huge deal. We all had to learn about it in school. We all had to, uh, to spend at least a week in social or a day in social studies talking about it. They've made several movies about it. And the concern was during JFK's presidency that the Soviet Union, the Russians, were staging a handful of missiles in Cuba. Well, that was a big deal. That was considered an existential threat. We were on the verge of World War III. We were on the verge of a mutually assured destruction of the nuclear type. These were not considered hyperboles at the time. That was considered a rational assessment of the situation. But here we have Russian ships with even more missiles than the Cuban Missile Crisis. The missiles themselves are more powerful missiles, perhaps even nuclear missiles. They're even closer than they were on the island of Cuba because they are in the waters between Cuba and America. And these military ships, both submarine and battle frigate, have enough firepower to basically er erase all of humanity from Key West to Disney World. So by any measure on paper, when if you're making the T-chart, this situation that you're living under right now is a much bigger threat than the Cuban Missile Crisis ever was. But watch how the media covers for it. No, this is an emergency mode because this would be what? This would be a foreign policy failure. They can't have that. He's already doing so bad with the Ukraine-Russia war. He's already doing so bad with the Gaza-Israeli conflict. He's doing so bad with what's going on with Iran, and Iran's killing some of our soldiers, and we're not doing anything about it. I mean, the outside world's just blowing up. Can't have another demerit. Not right here, five months before an election. Oh, my goodness. So the media has already demonstrated that they have no journalistic integrity. I'm not sure they ever did in your lifetime, but they damn sure aren't going to hype a story, even though it deserves to be hyped. If it's going to hurt Team Blue, 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Agree or disagree, the situation we have now with the Russian ships docking in Havana Harbor is far more of a threat to the United States security than the Cuban Missile Crisis ever was. 800-288-9227. You think you don't like the mainstream media. I posit that you should like them even less. They do not deserve any of your respect if they are if they are dodging this. They do not deserve any of your respect if they told you lies that have, I don't know, maybe closed your favorite restaurant, ruined two years of your kids' schooling, inflated our currency and cost uh, my, my Subway combo. I just got a foot long, chips and a drink, $13. These lies cost you all the time, every day, every day. It's, it's lowered your standard of living. And these people, I don't, know, I don't know why they get away with it. But here it is. Russia now has ships. Now, why, now why is Russia doing this? Let's ask that question. Well, I, there's two reasons. Number one, Russia has said that they are con they're considering, how, how is this worded? Let me get this right. Uh, the arrival of the ships, this is from Fox News, the arrival of the ships comes after Putin suggested the, that he may authorize strikes on the U.S. via proxy countries, which he says is precisely what the U.S. is doing in Ukraine. And he's not wrong. He's right. That's what we're doing in Ukraine. Biden changed the policy. I, what was it, last month? Where not only is um, not only are we giving them humanitarian aid, we're giving them actual missiles, and they have the right to shoot those into Russian territory in an offensive fashion. 
we used to say, hey, all the all the military equipment we're giving you, you can only use that to defend Ukrainian territory and you're not allowed to shoot it into Russian territory. Well, we're now doing proxy shots on Russia. So he is doing this in what? Direct response to a Joe Biden foreign policy change. Joe Biden is doing this. Joe Biden is the reason why there's Russian missiles 90 miles from Key West right now and a nuclear sub capable of uh, committing some pretty nasty counterattacks should Joe Biden keep screwing up. The other part of the, the reason why they're doing this is they probably saw the video over the weekend of Joe Biden at the Juneteenth concert. I know they had it a week early, whatever. They, they'll, they'll learn to read calendars soon. Uh, but they had a Juneteenth concert there and it was outdoors. And you, you might have seen this in your social media feed. It's the one where he's in the middle of a crowd and there's people lining up on both sides of him. And there's like Kamala next to him and Kamala's white husband is next to her. And everybody's dancing and moving and grooving and at least trying to bounce and keep a beat, except for Joe Biden, who is frozen like a statue. And he's just doing that fake smile thing where he's like, see my veneers? And he's staring off in the distance. And it looks like, and I, I'm not saying this just to beat him up. I'm just saying this because I had four kids. And you you know when your kid is old enough to walk but still has to wear a diaper? And then sometimes you catch them while they're standing up and, and they you know, drop a load in their britches? And that's what it looks like. He looks like he's dropping a deuce. And, and I don't know if he is. He could just be doing a number one. I don't know. But he do, he does freeze up for a very long time. And I personally don't think that's the reason you should vote for someone or vote against someone. A a guy who poops his pants but is a free market capitalist pig could run this country better than a socialist who has control of all all of his uh, bodily fluids. So, no, that that shouldn't be a determining factor. But if you are one of America's enemies, if you're a a Putin overseas and you're concerned uh, about, you know, if if we're going to strike America, what kind of retaliation are we going to get? How could we look any weaker than we look right now In, in Putin's lifetime? Have we looked weaker than that? I mean, that's I, I'm not saying that's an invitation to strike, but that's actually, if you were putting on the T-chart, should we attack America or not, Joe Biden would be on the yes side. Joe Biden would say, yeah, well, we might as well get it over with while he's still in office because he, he might not be there this time next year and we'll have missed our opportunity. That's definitely a factor in my book. But what do you think? 800-288-9227. Now, credit, CNN's actually been reporting on this every once in a while. It's not just Fox News. But this is something that cannot make the Biden administration look good. This isn't a foreign policy win for whoever's in the White House when Russia is uh, dancing around the bottom of Florida with some missiles in tow and just whatever. And what do we compare this to? The closest that we have in American history is the Cuban Missile Crisis. Remember when Kennedy was in office? It was the scariest thing in the world. It was an existential threat that the Soviet Union, that Russia had missiles staged in Cuba. Now, they were still manned by Cubans, and they were under the care of the Cuban military. And it was just like, hey, we're just going to borrow these and just set them up here. But here we have something that's even bigger. More missiles, more powerful missiles, closer to the United States. And they're actually in the hands of Russia, and they're actually on a boat that can get even closer. There's a submarine there, too. They could be nuclear missiles, although our officials have said we've, we've declared that they're, they're not, there's not nuclear missiles on there. How could you know? Y'all really know? Do you know? Or are you just saying that so you don't look even worse? So you don't have a reason for people to freak out saying, damn, Biden's foreign policy is so bad, Russia has parked nuclear missiles 90 miles away from Key West. That's what the headline should be. It was really important during the Cuban Missile Crisis. However, this time around... No, not not nearly the same amount of concern. Well, stop it. This this just belies credibility here. Because CNN will mention it, and then they'll go off, and then they'll say some more negative trust uh, stuff about Trump. Right now, CNN has uh, a report on the IRS audit division goes soft on the wealthy. Oh yeah, because that's more important. Your wealthy neighbors haven't been audited as much as they should be. That's far more important than Russia having missiles hovering over florida right now yeah sure that that's that's a bigger threat to our society and national security i mean have y'all not heard of the cuban missile crisis now another reason that they're going to soft pedal the reporting on this and and avoid it as much as they can is because putin was asked what's all this about and he's like well we have a long-standing uh, ally in cuba and it's quite normal for allies to do war games and practice drills you know with our militaries uh coordinating and 
anyway, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the concern is here because you know I'm, I'm also thinking about we need to start pre gaming and, and working together because I'm I might have to authorize strikes on the United States. Oh, that sounds scary. That sounds like it might be a headline worth reporting. Putin said he's thinking about doing strikes on the United States via proxy countries. Now, why would that hurt Joe Biden? Well, because Putin continued. He said, the reason why I'm thinking that or considering that or the reason why that policy position is on the table is because that's what the U.S. is already doing to us. You're correct, sir. Not that I'm on Putin's side, but we talked about this on the James show last week when the Biden administration changed their position and some of the missiles and rockets and military hardware that was being generously donated from the American taxpayer to the Ukraine's Ukrainians. It used to come with the rules that you can only use this to defend Ukrainian territory. You cannot shoot these in to Russian territory. Why? Because we don't want to be seen as American weapons firing into sovereign Russian land because that is what an act of war actions like that start wars actions like that start world wars and so how do you report on this and make biden look good it's gonna be really tough we'll see how they try and do it no doubt it's not like they're gonna change their mind and be like oh we were wrong biden's an idiot but this is this is the continuing saga that you've enjoyed on on russia get back in the time machine here I know. I have the Autotron 3000. You, I, I got the receipts. We get in the DeLorean. We set the, set the flux capacitor back to 2012. In a debate, Mitt Romney was asked. He's the opponent of Obama here. He's against Obama. Who do you think is one of the biggest geopolitical foe the United States is facing right now? And he said Russia. And then he got mocked. <laughs> oh, really? The 80s call it. They want their foreign policy back. Russia's uh, an oppositional foe. Pfft. What a rude. When you were asked what's the biggest geopolitical threat facing America, you said Russia. Not Al Qaeda. You said Russia. In the 1980s are now calling to ask for their foreign policy back because you know the Cold War has been over for 20 years. Russia, I indicated, is a geopolitical foe. Not a number one. Excuse me. It's a geopolitical foe. And I said in the same in the same paragraph, I said, and Iran is the greatest national security threat we face. Russia does continue to battle us in the UN time and time again. I have clear eyes on this. I'm not going to wear rose colored glasses when it comes to Russia or Mr. Putin. Now, remember, Hillary went over there with the reset button, the big red button, and she hit that. So I don't understand if Obama said that Russia is not a concern and Hillary reset relations. We're friends again, right? They said everything straight. They took this guy that was their adversary and, and they took care. No, they didn't. Apparently that didn't work. That's so weird. That didn't work. Now, around the same time, actually before that, check this out. Sarah Palin, go back eat four more years. Sarah Palin predicted... Obama's soft stance, and now we're dealing with Obama's vice president, who has a similar foreign policy. Listen to what Sarah Palin said back in 2008 about this Russia situation. The Russian army invaded the nation of Georgia. Senator Obama's reaction was one of indecision and moral equivalence, the kind of response that would only encourage Russia's Putin to invade Ukraine next. Well, dang, that that happened. Now, it didn't happen a couple months later or a couple years later, but it did happen. It was predicted. Isn't that interesting? Because what she's talking about there, she's not talking about they went into like Savannah, Georgia or whatever. There's a couple of provinces, South Ossetia and Abkhazia. And if you remember back in 2008, right before George Bush got out of office, Russia rolled tanks into there and took it over. Obama was a senator, but he was the leading candidate to replace Bush. And he did. He kind of waffled and he expressed a foreign policy that came to embody uh, the administration's foreign policy after he was in office. And look at that. It certainly did lead to a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now, Russia has been on the lips of the media and Democrats uh, during the Trump era because Trump supposedly colluded with Russia. For, so for three years, 2017, 2018, 2019, that was the most reported story. That was the top story, a plurality of news time was spent on that story turned out to be a lie. Here's Robert Mueller himself saying Trump did not collude with Russia. Second, the investigation did not establish that members. Oops. Second, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired with the Russian government in its election interference activities. So this Russia situation 
is more serious than the news is going to let on. But I'm not trying to freak you out. I'm not saying that we're on the cusp of World War III. I'm just saying that if someone else was in power, that's how it would be treated, and you damn well know it. All right, stay put. Coming up next is Mark Levin. I'm James Parker. This has been The James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3.